A couple of people have been bugging me about getting MPD installed and actually doing a video on it. Now, most of my music I listen to through Spotify, but there's a few artists, especially recently, who aren't actually on there. So I thought, okay, maybe it would be a good idea to actually have an easy way to listen to music on my desktop so I don't always have to go through YouTube or other methods like that. Now, getting MPD set up is really, really easy, but I also want to have things like my media keys working as well, which isn't that difficult. However, it is a little bit of extra work. So when you're trying to get MPD set up, there is a sample configuration you can use and you can copy it from slash user slash share slash doc slash MPD slash MPD conf dot example. Don't use that. I don't know what it is about that file, but every single time I try to use it, it just breaks my MPD installation. My better suggestion would be to either take my dot file or take the dot file from the Arch Linux wiki. I don't know what setting is hidden in here that's breaking everything, but for whatever reason, it seems to break it every single time. So what we're going to be working with is this configuration right here. So if we go over to the MPD directory and then mpd.conf inside of my .config, all of this can be located in .mpd.conf as well in your home directory. However, I don't like it being there. So inside of this file here, we're going to make a couple of changes. So we're going to set our DB file location. So by default, it's going to try to put it into your .config directory. So the database is where all of the general information about how to find the music is located. So this is so you can very easily load up your music. It should be located inside your .local slash share directory. However, for whatever reason, it recommends on the Arch Wiki to do it in your .config. Don't do that. Do it where I'm saying to put it. Now, you're also going to have your log file. This comes from the Arch Wiki config as well. This is basically what to actually output your log to. Don't bother changing this. And then also your music directory. Now, it will default to home slash music, but if you do want to move it, just change this directory and it will move to that new location. Whenever you're actually putting any settings in here, make sure that you're putting them inside of quotation marks. If they're not inside of quotation marks, you will break your configuration. Now, after that, we have a couple of very basic settings. So we have the playlist directory. This is basically where all of your playlists are going to be stored. And then we have the PID file. Now the PID file, you probably are never going to need to use, Basically, this is going to store the process ID of MPD. So if you need to access that ID, then this is where that ID is going to be located in a file form. We then have our state file. This is going to keep track of the state of MPD. So every time you quit out of MPD, it's going to try to reload the state from this file. So if that file is missing, it's going to go back to the default state. So if you do happen to do anything weird inside of MPD, then you can always go and delete this file and it will go back to default. And then lastly, we have the sticker file. Now the sticker file is where dynamic information about each of your songs is going to be stored. You probably don't need it most of the time, but if you do want to have it there, then I would also recommend putting that in your .local slash share. Same with all of these here. It will suggest on the Arch Linux wiki to put them in your .config directory. Once again, I have no idea why it suggests that. Put them in the XDG location just because it makes more sense. I would also suggest setting the auto update setting as well. So this is going to make it so every time you add a new file into your music directory, it will automatically go and update the database. Otherwise, you're going to have to go and do that manually. So if you're using, say, MPC as your interface, you would do MPC update. Or if you're using NC, whatever the, that application is called, you would go and press U. Either one will work, but I recommend just having auto update set to yes because it will make your life considerably easier. And you can also go and set the depth in the folder it's going to look for. And setting it to zero will mean that it will just check the music directory itself. It won't check any folders inside of that directory. If you do want to do that, however, you can go and set the depth limit or if you just don't include this setting altogether, it's just going to do a recursive search until it hits the bottom of the directory tree. Also, just to not be really annoying, go and set restore pause to yes. So that means that whenever you open up MPD, the music will start paused. It won't automatically start playing. So MPD runs on port 6600. So if by chance you have some other application also trying to use that port, you can go and configure this with the port option. But you're probably not going to run into anything like that, especially anything written for Linux. They probably should know if they're a reasonable developer what popular applications are using for their port number. If you want to go and change the symlink behavior inside of the music directory, we can use the follow underscore inside underscore symlinks. 
and the follow underscore outside underscore sim links as well. Now, both of these will default to yes. So follow inside sim links means that if you have a sim link inside of the music directory that links to somewhere else inside of the music directory, whether that should actually be followed. Now the outside option means that if you have a sim link that points outside of the music directory, whether that one should be followed. Now unless you use sim links inside your music directory, it doesn't really matter what the options actually are set here. And apparently for Pulse Audio, you need to go and do this right here to make it work. However, if I go and delete this, it still works just fine. So I don't... I don't know, maybe it's a problem on other people's systems. At least on my system, it's not really that much of an issue. So even if we go and restart MPD right now, so let's go and kill MPD and then restart it and then go and play a song. Uh, actually, I actually have to open up NCM, whatever the application called, play it. As we can see, that seems to be playing just fine. So I don't know, maybe it's not really a problem. Now, MPD is just a music player daemon, so you need some sort of client to access it. Now, typically people will use something like NCM PCPP. I'm going to do a dedicated video on this, and it seems like a pretty useful tool from what I've seen. If you just want a bare CLI tool, you have the option of using MPC. I wouldn't recommend using so just because you don't have any interface whatsoever and there are options for GUI tools as well if you prefer to have a GUI option. Now for the media keys there are tools built directly for MPD but personally I like to use player CTL because player CTL is generic so I can use it for things like Spotify, Chromium and I can't actually use it for MPD and that's because MPD does not support Empress. So we also have to go and download an extra application. This is available on the AUR. It is called MPDRIS2. And when we go and run this, now we'll see we can actually go and use our media keys just fine. So you don't have to do any configuration for this. Basically, just run the application and it works perfectly fine in the background. So every time you launch up MPD, I would recommend also launching up MPDRIS2 as well. And player CTL is pretty straightforward. So we have player CTL pause, which will pause the song. We have player CTL play, which will play the song. We have a player CTL play pause, which is my preferred method because that's going to be a toggle. So spell it correctly. I thought I did a video on this already, but apparently not. And you also have things like player CTL next and previous, which will go next and previous. There are plenty of other things you can do with player CTL as well. And until I do the video on that, feel free to come have a look through the man page and you will see everything that you can do. Now, I would also recommend running this with another option. So if you do player CTL dash dash player and then pass in MPD, this is going to make sure it only runs on MPD because I said it was generic, so Player CTL will actually run on the first player it matches on. So if you have, say, Chromium open and MPD, it might try to run on Chromium. And then if you're using something like, say, SXHKD, all you're going to do is go into your configuration file, go down to wherever you want to put your media key support, and then just bind those commands to whatever keys you want to support. So I like having them on the super keys as well. So I do things like super F8, super F6, so on and so forth. That's just how I like to work. But you don't have to do that. You can bind it directly to the media key you want to support. Now, when it comes to auto starting MPD and MPDRIS2, my recommendation is typically to do it in your XNet RC. But if you want to do it as a system D job, you can go and do so. But I'm not going to show you how to do so in this video. If you want to start it in your XNet RC, go into that file and then just, you know, run the application. So MPD launch in the background, MPDRIS2 launch in the background. And there you go. It's going to be working just fine now. So I think that's pretty much everything for a basic MPD setup. I know there's some extra stuff you can do if you're working with Ulcer and it can't automatically detect your sound card. I'll leave a link down below to the Arch Linux Wiki, which does a pretty good job at explaining that. But since I'm using Pulse Audio, it seems to just work out of the box. Now, keep your eyes open for the countless MPD client videos I'm going to do going forward. I'm not sure what the first one's going to be. Maybe it'll be NCMMMMP, whatever the name is. I, I don't know what the name is. It's a terrible name and I'm never going to get it right. So I think that's pretty much everything for me. But before I go, I would like to thank my supporters. So a special thank you to 
Joachim, Corbinian, Andrew Craig, Nathan, Monster, Joseph, Peter, the Road, Tony, Brennan, Donald, John, Marek, Mikhail, Nate, Dog, Nephite, Tease, and Zilva. If you want to go and support my work, there'll be some links down below to my Patreon, Libra Pay, Subscribestar, all of that sort of stuff. I've got my podcast, which is Tech Over Tea, available anywhere you listen to audio podcasts and video podcasts, any sort of podcast. And I've also got this channel available on Library, Odyssey, BitChute, BitChute, and some other platforms as well, if you want to watch it somewhere that isn't YouTube. So I think that's pretty much everything for me, and I'm out.